divorce has to take place. If you want to be amongst those who want to reach the highest levels, you have to divorce this dunya. And divorcing the dunya doesn't mean you go and you kill yourself. But divorcing the dunya is taking this dunya out of your heart. Divorce of this dunya, meaning that this dunya is the last on your list. It's not your priority. It's not what you live for. Yeah, things come along. Yes, you enjoy things. Yes, you take advantage of things in this dunya. But that is not what you live for. That is what it means. So in those intelligent group of people of the servants of Allah, when they looked in this dunya, and they realized that no one lasts in it. No one lasts in this, in this dunya. No one lived forever. They look at it and they took it and they turned it into an ocean. Just imagine. They took this dunya that they just divorced and they, turn, they turned it into an ocean. Like a sea. And you know how the sea takes you up and down. If you, look, if you walk on the ground, most probably you're always going to walk straight. But in the ocean you don't know. Bahar al-Dar. You don't know what you expect. You don't know what it's going to be. Or moody. The sea is moody. You don't know how it's going to behave in, in the next hour. Alright? And that's why they made it an ocean. They didn't say it's a, it's, it's a land. Why? Because the land walking on the earth is easy. You know what to expect most of the time. It's a desert. You walk in the desert. What you expect. Okay? But in the ocean you don't know. In the water you don't know. The sea, you don't know what to expect, so you always need to be cautious. You always need to be aware. You always need to be on your toes. Just prepare. Okay? So they turned this dunya into something like an ocean. Now, they are in the ocean, they need a boat. This boat was the righteous deeds. Their boats, because usually the boat is what's going to get you saved. That's one of the reasons, one of the means. If you don't have a boat, you're going to get tired and you're going to drown in the middle of the ocean. Usually, a piece of wood might save it. Might save you. Piece of wood. And sometimes, the Titanic won't save you. It's all means. It's not, it's not about the size. However, it's one of the means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah allows, usually this is the norm. So if I'm in the middle of this ocean, if I'm in the middle of this storm, if I'm in the middle of this, of this moody uh, water or sea, I got to have some kind of safety. And that is my righteous deeds. So that's what those people from before us, those who served this deen, those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the power to spread this deen so easily, were successful. Because they were intelligent. In the sense, they knew exactly why Allah put them here. All of us know that. But they knew and they lived it. They knew and they acted accordingly. They knew and they put into practice. If I, I can have all the knowledge in the world, if I'm not using it for my benefits, what's the point? You'll find professors in, in universities and they will be in religious departments and he maybe memorized the whole Quran and the Hadith. But he's Catholic. He's a Jew or a Christian or whatever. What benefit is going to give him? Nothing. Actually, hujjad against him. Will be against him. He knew, but didn't believe. Very important. So those people understood their purpose in life, and they understood how they need to achieve it, and they tried their best to do it. That's why Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, and you all know the fitna of the creation of the Quran, he tells his son one day that, Oh my son, I did my best in this fitna. 
He did his best. He could not go any further. He did his best. And that is hal those who know their purpose. Because the issue of creating the Quran or the creation of the Quran and the fitna had to affect his purpose. It's not something, it's not like the neighbor built the, or took a foot of his land. It's not someone step or, or hit his kid. It has to do with the core of his purpose that he's living for. So if at that moment he doesn't give his best, when he gonna give it? That's why after the fitna, he gets the title of Imam wa Ahl Sunnah. The Imam, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah. Because he stood firm where big names and big ulama at that time collapsed. And they followed Ma'mun. They followed what he said. They did not believe it, but they fought to save their blood. And that is okay. But he understood that if he would listen and obey Ma'mun and the fitna, then a lot of people would follow. A lot of people were waiting. A lot of students of knowledge were waiting with their ink and their paper, waiting to hear what Imam Ahmed going to say to write. And he could not say anything other than the book of Allah is the word of Allah, not the creation of Allah. And he got out of this, tortured, starving, this and that, to the point where they used to make, they, they, they chained him in prison, rahimahullah, and they used to make, he asked the Khalifa, Mir al he said, please make the chains big so I can take my hands and my legs out of them so I can make wudu and pray. And they listened to him. And after he would make the wudu and pray, he will go back and put his hands in the chain. Why? The obedience of the wudu. Why? Because he did not want to shed the bloods of the Muslims. Very important. So the point is, he did his best as he tells, as he tells his son. <clears throat> so those people <clears throat> understood very well as we already established why they live here. And once this becomes your understanding, then I promise you, you will not say the following statement. Ah, I got a lot of free time. I'm killing time. You will never make those statements anymore because you got no time. Because if you have time and you know that you have a lot of free time, then you are not there yet. That's why those people did not have time for Fasafis no more. They did not have time for the small things and the minute things. They were not concerned about these, these issues that most people are involved in. They're beyond that. They don't have time to play around. Even if it's mubah, they don't have time for mubah. They don't have time for what's permissible. So imagine what's haram. They don't even get close to it. يقول علي بن أحمد الزيدي أبو الحسن يجعل النوافل كالفراغ والمعاصي كالكفر والشهوات كالسم ومخالطة الناس كالنار والغذاء كالدواء. He's giving an advice. One of those people. You want to reach that level? You want to, to strive and go higher? He said, you have to make your nawafil, you all know what nawafil are, you have to make them as important as faraid. You have to make Sins as important as kufr, as dangerous as kufr. So once you look at a sin and it's a, you underestimate it's not a big deal, everyone is doing more. But once you think of any sin as kufr, then you, I don't think anyone wants to put himself in kufr. وَالشَّهَوَاتِ كَسُمْ And the desires, the, the desires and the temptations and the natural calls or whatever, you have to look at it and consider it poison. 